Hello and welcome back to our RBT video. I hope you are keeping well uh, by God's grace and you are excited and getting ready to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Actually, Christmas Day is not that far away. Um, anyway, I hope you've also been blessed and encouraged um, as we read through some of the books in the Bible, some from the Old Testament and some from the New Testament in our uh, RBT together like this. But I hope you've also been challenged in many ways to see uh, the beauty and the challenge and uh, the joy that comes from knowing his word and how all these books, whether they're from the Old Testament or from the New Testament, they center uh, and they revolve around uh, the person of our Lord and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Anyway, this month, the month of December 2020, we will be reading or are reading uh, through the book of Leviticus. Now, Leviticus is... Uh, uh, gets a bad rap sometimes. You know, you start the beginning of the year. Uh, my New Year resolution, resolution, we say, is to read through the Bible and we read Genesis and then Exodus. And by the time we come to Leviticus, we are like, what is going on? Uh, this is where our Bible reading comes to a halt, to a stop, to die even. Um, anyway, there is no doubt that the book of Leviticus is a hard book to read. Uh, there is no denying that. Uh, sometimes I think uh, Leviticus is a little bit like a building project. Um, you know, you have all the bricks and the cements and the wood that's involved and all the mess uh, that involves, uh, you know, maybe you want a new kitchen or a new house or a new extension, whatever that may be. Uh, and we need strong foundation and, and blueprints. And finally, after six months or so, or even a year, um, you see that this kitchen or the new extension looks amazing. And then suddenly you look back and think, ah, that that bit where they were sticking out was there for the shelf or for the cabinet or for the sink. And it makes sense. You get to see the blueprints. So sometimes uh, it might be worth help, uh, worth thinking of Leviticus as a little blueprint of what is to come. Uh, a lot of building work, <laughs> uh, but it'll help us to see what is to come and we will see this ultimately in Jesus Christ. All the sacrifices and all the ceremonies and all the rituals will help us better understand the works of Jesus Christ. They are like a blueprint of what Jesus will do for his people. What happens at the cross, we, if you want to know and dig deeper, Leviticus is one of the places that we need to go. Um, anyway, Leviticus provides a theological foundation uh, of the atoning work of Jesus. Like I said, what happens at the cross? Here is a blueprint. Uh, Leviticus also highlights how important holiness is to God. Holiness in one way is one of the main theme in uh, the book of Leviticus, that God's holiness and the holiness God expects uh, from his people. Uh, Leviticus begins where Exodus ends. Uh, Leviticus continues the story of God's relationship with his people. Exactly. Uh, where Exodus left uh, with this looming question, how are these people so sinful and so prone to break faith with God ever to survive, if, especially as God is going to take up residence uh, in their midst, right in the middle? Um, we don't have time to explore all the nooks and corners of Leviticus, but I will dive straight into the heart of Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 16, the Day of Atonement. Now, what is the Day of Atonement? You know, the most important uh, uh, day of the Jewish calendar, the Day of Atonement. Uh, if you want to have, if you want to turn your Bibles to Jewish, uh, Jewish to Leviticus chapter sixteen, please do so. What is the Day of Atonement, and why is it so important? Well, you might remember if you have read through the Book of Exodus. In Exodus, we read that God commanded uh, Moses. Uh, to build a tabernacle uh, with two rooms, if you like, space, the most holy place and the holy place. It is in this most holy place that you get the Ark of the Covenant, a uh, big box with the Ten Commandments in it. In other words, it represents the divine throne room of God, his divine throne room. And no one is allowed into this most holy place except the high priest once a year on this day, the Day of Atonement. Um, it is on this day, the Day of Atonement, the most sacred person, the high priest, gets to perform the most uh, sacred ceremony on inside the most sacred place. It is not something that you can just go and have a peek into. The high priest 
has to take a bath, a ceremonial bath, to clean himself physically, to put on his priestly garment, and then make an atonement for his own sins. A very complicated, beautiful and strict process. He is then to bring two goats um, to atone for the sins of the whole people, the whole of the Israelites. On one goat was uh, one goat was to be used as a sin offering to wash them clean, uh, to wash the sins of the people for the forgiveness of sins. Uh, the other goat was used as a scapegoat. Uh, the high priest is to place all the sins of the people of the whole, the Israelites on the head of the other goat, the scapegoat, and then the goat is sent away into the wilderness. It is sim it is a symbolic way of saying that all the sins and uncleanness of the people has been sent away, dealt with. Uh, this is a very simple way of um, explaining the Day of Atonement. You know, there is a lot of blood involved. Uh, there is a lot of animal killing. Sometimes we say, why all this blood and gory stuff? Well, this really shows that for sin to be atoned for, for sin to be dealt with, something has to die or Put it more bluntly, someone has to die. And you also see the seriousness of sin. Uh, sometimes we don't, maybe we don't think often how serious sin is. You know, God is a holy God. And for sinful people to be with God or God to be this most holy person we know of, i.e. God, to be with his people, sinful, something has to die in that place. Something has to be uh, sin has to be dealt with. So the Day of Aton Atonement really uh, points us forward to Jesus himself and all that he will do to deal with our sin. You know, sin cannot be, cannot be just swept aside. It has to be uh, dealt with. So the Day of Atonement points us forward to Jesus himself. He is a high priest who deals uh, with our sins, with our uncleanness. But there was shedding of blood, not of animals, but again, it points us that there was shedding of blood, not of animals, but of him. His blood was shed for our sins, for the forgiveness of our sins. He was the high priest and was also the sacrifice. In fact, we get an echo of this in Hebrews 9 and 10. Um, let me read a few verses from Hebrews 9. The author of Hebrews says this in chapter 9, verse 12. He entered, i.e. Jesus entered once and for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means, by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. So uh, the author of Hebrews basically slay Jesus using his own blood, entered that place and had, has made uh, a redemption, i.e. has paid the price, he has dealt with sin. And then in verse 28, we are told in chapter 9 of Hebrews, Christ having been offered once to bear the sins of many. Do you see what Hebrews, the author of Hebrews is doing? He's saying that Jesus is the high priest, but he's also the sacrifice. So here we see Jesus. Again, it's, it's Leviticus is pointing us to Jesus, our great high priest and our sacrifice. I hope this has given you a little bit of a taster of what is to come or what the uh, book of Leviticus is all about. It, it is about uh, pointing us to Jesus, our great high priest and the sacrifice and the seriousness of sin. For us sinful human beings to dwell with God Sin has to, dealt, uh, to be dealt with, and it has been done, not by the blood of calves or bulls or goats or lamb, but it has been done by Jesus. So this Christmas, let us celebrate uh, this baby who was born to deal with our uncleanness, with our sinfulness. Let us give thanks, let us rejoice in Jesus Christ, our great high priest and the ultimate sacrifice. Amen and Merry Christmas to you all.